Good morning and jai hind children. I welcome you all in today's live class of biology. Children, today I am going to start the chapter our forest. All right. And in this chapter, we will discuss mainly about the certain topics, the terms related to a forest. Okay. So, children, a forest, which is a large area covered with a thick growth of trees, shrubs, herbs, grasses, peepers, and the climbers. Okay. And the types of plants which is found in different forests they vary and they depending on the climatic condition of the region the forest is situated in okay so how, what what is forest children a forest is a large area and it is covered with what thick growth of trees shrubs herbs grasses creepers and climbers Right. These are the different kind of plants and these the types of plant which is found in different forests they vary and they depend on the climatic condition of that region. Okay. Now the branches of a tree above the trunk form the crown of the tree. Originally the crown What is it? It is the branches of the trees above the trunk. So they together forms the crown of it. And the different trees have crowns of different types and sizes. The crowns of tall trees together forms the roof over the other plants. And this is called a canopy. Okay, so what is crown children? Yes, the branches of tall trees above the trunk. It forms the crown of it is. And the canopy, the different trees which have the crowns of different types and sizes. And these crowns of tall trees together form a roof over the other plants. And this is called the canopy. Now, a thick canopy not allow sunlight to come in and it is therefore quite dark inside a thick forest such as a tropical rainforest. Okay children, so the terms crown and this canopy, I hope that you understood. It is. So with the help of the diagram, you can understand it well as Suppose this one is the the trees, different trees which are found in forest. So the crown indicates that the branches of trees above the trunk. Okay, so they form the crown. So, above the trunk, this is the crown. Alright, and the crowns of tall trees together form a roof over the other plant and it is called an opening. So, the tall trees their branches, they form the roof and this is known as canopy. Get it? Now, in a forest, the plants that grows in the shed of canopy forms the understory. So, this is the canopy and below it, whatever the plants which are growing, they are known as Under story. Origin. And there are different layers in the understory. As the different kind of plants are found here, so the different layers is present in understory. Now below the tall trees, 
are smaller trees and below which the shrubs and tall grasses and the herbs forms the lower layer Gateland. so under story we have the different layers the tall trees make the one layer the shrubs makes another layer and tall grasses and the small grasses makes another layer so there are different layers present under the under story of crown cano okay now the forest floor it consists of soil which is covered with dead and decaying leaves flowers fruits seeds twigs and herbs as well as animal droppings get it so these are the different substances which are present on forest floor all right children what are these yes it is soil which is covered with dead and decaying leaves flowers fruits seeds twigs and herbs as well as the animal droppings and it provides the favorable conditions for seeds to germinate get it and many of these grow up into trees get it children no the types of animals which is found in a forest it also differ according to the climatic conditions in which the forest is situated okay so the different forest have the different types of animals as a large number of mammals such as monkeys deer elephants bears and jackals reptiles such as snakes lizards and crocodiles amphibians such as frogs and toads insects such as ants and beetles birds spiders millipedes fish and several types of microorganism okay they all are found in plant get it so these all are the different group of animals which are found in the forest in excess like that mammals amphibians reptiles insects birds and fishes get it so this one is the general information which i have given about the forest now tell in one more thing as the the process of decomposition that is the decaying of matters takes place like when the fruits leaves flowers they fall down on the surface of soil they get decomposed by microorganism and during this process the heat is given out get it and we can show it with the help of a simple activity get it so i'm going to explain you this activity and the objective is heat is given out during the all right children as it is not a part of your activity syllabus so i will explain it only and to show that the heat is given out during dk you can perform the simple activity as make a dig okay dig a small pit so simply you have to dig a small pit and in this pit you will put the leaves and vegetable waste all right and then cover it with soil so after putting here the leaves dry leaves fallen down leaves and the vegetable waste covered with soil okay and pour some water on it the leaves and vegetable waste in the pit will start decaying and now remove it 
the covering of the soil after three four days and feel the pit inside so what you will feel yes you will feel that warm it is warm and this shows that heat is given out during the process of dt because inside this pit these leaves and the vegetable waste get decayed by the microorganism and because of this process the heat is produced that we can feel after removing the soil three four days okay so this is the activity which is given here now come to the next topic of the chapter and the topic is forest well forest wealth children here we will discuss that the forests are helpful for us in many ways okay so one by one we will discuss these all and the first one is the forest prevents floods and maintain the water table prevents floods and maintain that water table okay children when the rain water falls on the leaves of trees and plants and then drip slowly onto the forest floor and thus the water does not collect and stagnate on the forest floor and this prevents the flooding okay and the water is able to seep into the soil and helps to recharge the water table and when it rains heavily in the city the roads get flooded but this does not happens in a forest get it why so the reason is in cities the roads get flooded because the process of seeping of water not takes place the surface or the soil is covered with the roads or concrete like that or cement floor that is why the seepage not takes place but in forest the water gets seeped because the roots of the trees roots of the plants help to seep is that water all right so the forest prevents floods and maintain the water table now the second importance is it prevents soil erosion all right children you already have studied about the soil erosion that the roots of the plants binds the soil particles either and prevents the soil erosion okay and thus maintain the fertility of the soil also and the soil erosion is also prevented because the rain drops they do not fall directly on the forest floor with full force because of the presence of forest because of the presence of trees all right and that is why the soil erosion gets prevented because of the presence of trees in forest get it now the third importance is yes it supplies oxygen okay the plants in the forest they release oxygen giving the photosynthesis is it we already have discussed the process of photosynthesis in previous chapters children is it not and you have seen there oxygen is produced oxygen is released in this process so in forest plants release oxygen during this process and it provides all animals including us including we human beings with oxygen to breathe and helps to maintain the ratio of oxygen to carbon dioxide 
in the atmosphere. Okay, and that is why forests are called green lungs. So, what forests are called? They are called green lungs. So, I hope that you understood the reason why the forests are called green lungs because. Yes, because they supply oxygen, they produce oxygen during photosynthesis and helps to maintain the ratio of oxygen to carbon dioxide in atmosphere. Get it? Now, the next importance is they absorb carbon dioxide. Right. The forest helps to absorb carbon dioxide. As you know that, if the amount of carbon dioxide increases in atmosphere, it would result in increase in Earth's temperature. Okay, and the plants in the forest, they take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during photosynthesis process. And hence, they help to maintain the right amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Is it children? Yes. So you can say that the forest also absorbs the carbon dioxide. And while absorbing carbon dioxide, yes, what they do? They maintain the right amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Alright? Now, the next importance is that they cool the air and increase rainfall. Okay, the forest help to cool the air and also increases the rainfall. As the plants in the forest, they absorb water from the soil and release it into the air through the process of transpiration. Is it children? And we already have discussed about the transpiration process. What is it? Yes, it is the process in which plants release excess water in the form of vapors. Is it? So this is known as transpiration. And this increases the amount of water vapors in the air and helps in cloud formation. And ultimately, it causes an increase in rainfall. And the increased amount of water vapor in the atmosphere also cools the surrounding air. Okay, so the process of transpiration helps the, to cool air and also increases the rainfall. Alright, now come to the next and the next importance is they provide food and shelter for wildlife. They provide food and shelter for wildlife. Alright? The forest, they provide best habitat children for various kinds of wild animals. Okay? The different kinds of animals which are living in the forest, they make their shelter. They find their shelter in which they can naturally survive and a large variety of plants can also grow in the forest and this provides food for a wide variety of herbivores okay as you know that the animals who only eats plants and plant products are known as herbivores so the excess plants in the forest provide the food for herbivores animals and this means Increased availability of food for a large variety of carnivores. If the herbivores animals will be more in forest, 
so definitely the carnivores will also be more because they will get their food and all the animals they depend directly or indirectly on plants for their food okay as the herbivores directly depends on plants for their food and the carnivores indirectly depends on plants for their food all right children so these are the different importance now the animals which also depends on plants for shelter and safety the most birds like they make their nests on branches of trees and you must have seen that so the birds get their shelter where on plants the monkeys apes and the bats they also live on trees so you can say that they get their shelter on trees and some insects such as caterpillar ladybird butterfly moth grasshopper and firefly they also find their shelter among the plants isn't it so the plants in forest provide shelters to large variety of animals and the many people belonging to different tribes which also live in forest they depend mostly on forest for their livelihood because they obtain different materials from the forest okay so the tribes people they depend mostly on forest for let their livelihood all right children so these are the importance as the forest provide food and shelter for wildlife now the next one is the forest provide us certain products which are helpful for us which are useful for us so the forest products which we get from different kinds of plants or trees that grow in forest like we get many things from forest like the forest yields valuable product such as timber so timber is one of the forest product wood pulp which is used for making the paper it is also a forest product turpentine a kind of oil latex which is used for the manufacture of rubber it is also a forest product oils spices resins gums la and medicinal plants such as neem holy basil which generally known as tulsi fox clove and rosy periwinkle they all give us medicines okay so these are the different plants and the different products that we obtain from the forest okay children so these are the different importance of the forest as we obtain these all materials timber wood pulp turpentine latex oils spices resins gums lacs and different medicinal plants got it now after this i'm going to explain you that the activity forest obtain from yes the products we obtain from forest as we discussed here so simply children you can look around your house and just find out how many things can you find that may have been made from materials which is derived from forest so this is the activity so what you will do here you will prepare a list of yes substances are the materials okay which is made up from the forest product like the furniture which we use tables chairs doors windows they all are made up from timber which we obtain from forest is it the paper which is used to make books notebooks okay this is also a forest product so there are number of materials which is derived from forest and you can note it down understood you know so this is the activity which is given here as this activity is not the part of your activity syllabus 
So I will not demonstrate. You can just write the name of the materials. Okay. Now, after this topic of the chapter, come to the oral questions one. Okay. And the oral question one is the crowns of trees in a thick forest they together form a roof over other plants. So what is this roof known as? Children remember that as we have discussed that the roof which forms the crowns of trees. Okay. In thick forest and over the other plant. So this is this roof is known as canopy. What this roof is known as children? It is known as canopy. Alright. Now come to the question number two. And the question is the understory in a thick forest has many layers. Describe three layers in the understory. So, what are the different three layers in understory children? So, the first layer is the layer which is formed by tall trees. The second layer which is formed by, yes, the short trees are the shrubs. The third layer which is formed by the, yes, the herbs. So these are the three different layers which is found under story and which forms the different layer. Alright. The first one, tall trees. Second, shrubs and the tall grasses. And the third one is the herbs. Okay. Now, the next question number P. And the question is, why do forests generally do not get flooded even after heavy rain? So children, please think about it. The forest not get easily flooded after heavy rain even. So the reason is because in forest lots of plants, trees are there and the roots of these plants and trees help to seepage of the rain water. And this is why the rain water gets seeped easily and get collected under ground and makes water table. And this is why the forest not get flooded. Okay. Now, the question number four is Air in a forest is generally cooler and has more moisture than the air in an open area. Why? So children, region here, you have to write that why the air is generally cooler in forest. Okay. As compared to the air in open area. So the reason is very simple as in forest, the plants, yes, release the water vapors by the process of transpiration. So that is why the amount of water vapors present in the air more in forest. This is why the air is cooler here. Whereas in open area where plants are not present, the amount of water vapors are less in air. And this is why the air is not cooler. The air is warmer in open area. Is it? Understood? The reason? So, you can explain the answer as because of the presence of more water vapors due to the process of transpiration, the air in forest are cooler. Whereas, in the absence of plants, the transpiration not takes place in open area and due to that, the amount of water vapors are less in open area and this is why the air in such places are warmer. But it so, this one is all about the oral question 
one. And I hope that you understood the answers of these all questions. All right, children. Thank you, and have a nice day, children.